Hello and welcome back to the Movie Memo Recap. Today we are going to recap a 2022 movie titled Black Warrant. Please be advised that there might be spoilers ahead. The film begins with Anthony Van Owen and his partner Juan, along with other DA officers, heading to the city's largest illegal drug site. On the way, Juan informs Anthony that his wife is expecting and that he will soon be a father. When Anthony hears this, he feels glad for Juan since he has always wanted a child. They eventually arrive at their destination. Anthony begs Juan to stay in the car since he believes there are enough officers for the task. When Juan hears this, he agrees, and Anthony leads the operation with his squad. At the time, they detain numerous people in the building and plan to question them at the police station. Moving upstairs, they discover a drug dealer and a woman carrying out unlawful dealings. Later, Anthony's crew encounters another man named Zico. Despite being arrested, Zico remains cool. But things get serious when Zico takes one of the officer's guns and begins shooting randomly. Everyone flees for cover as Zico's bullets strike. Outside the building, Juan received a call from his wife, who asked him to buy her favorite dish after work. Upon hearing it, he agreed. Just then, Zico, who was going to flee, ran into Juan and shot him on the spot. When Anthony heard the gunshot, he dashed out and was stunned to discover his colleague had died. The scene shifts to Nick Falcone, an elderly guy relaxing on a boat where he resides. His friend, Frank LaRusso, a government employee, paid Nick a visit. Frank stated that the government required Nick's assistance again. Nick, a retired assassin who had participated in numerous covert government missions, was initially hesitant. But when Frank revealed the large payout, Nick volunteered to take on the mission. Nick consented to take on the duty of terminating a group of illicit drug dealers who were attempting to affect the American economy. The next day, Anthony is sitting in his office, seemingly lost in thought and still lamenting Juan's death. Soon after, Juan's wife, Layla, arrives at the police station in tears after learning that her husband died during the operation. Anthony consoles her there, promising to find and bring justice to Juan's killer. In the next scene, Anthony and Escalante question Manuel, a drug dealer caught during Anthony's team's ambush. When Anthony inquires about the drug source, Manuel discloses that his employer, Hussein is not the supplier but has great plans. Escalante is fascinated and asks Manuel for further information on the proposal. However, Manuel refuses to divulge any additional information unless they cut a deal that would favor him. Escalante hesitates, but eventually accepts since he needs information on Hussein. On the other hand, Nick is busy gathering weapons and changing his car's license plate before departing on a government mission. Nick rushes to the hotel where his target is staying after gathering intelligence on him. He takes his time inspecting for a perfect spot for his mission. After completing his inspection, Nick grabbed a golf bag and proceeded to a flat across from the hotel. He set up his sniper rifle on the rooftop and targeted Manuel, who was in one of the hotel rooms. Meanwhile, Anthony walked into the spa room, where Manuel was relaxing. According to the plan, the police intend to hand over Manuel to the FBI. Manuel agreed, and while walking him to the car, Nick fatally shot him. Anthony rushed to the flat across the street to apprehend the shooter. Anthony bypassed Nick, who was walking out with his golf bag. Anthony had no suspicions about Nick. Following the incident, Escalante and his squad, which included Anthony, met at the police station to discuss the sniper who killed Manuel. Escalante became suspicious of a group of people claiming to be Manuel's boss. After the meeting, Escalante told Anthony to start digging into this group right away. Anthony and his colleagues began their investigation, hacking into the security cameras of a restaurant reported to be a gathering place for the group they were pursuing. Even though they were able to obtain footage from the cameras, they struggled to gather additional information because the cameras were unable to record all of the conversations. To remedy this problem, Anthony decided to place a listening device in restaurant. However, when he sought to enter as a customer, he was denied access to the VIP area where the group always gathered. Not one to give up lightly, Anthony approached Mina, one of the cooks, as she was in a grocery shop. After producing his police badge, Mina reluctantly consented to speak in his car. 
Anthony urged Mina to assist in placing a listening device in the VIP area, but she declined, in fear that she might get fired. Anthony persevered until she agreed to help him. That evening, Anthony and his colleagues monitored Mina's activities using a surveillance camera with a listening device buried beneath one of the tables. Meanwhile, Nick sat in his car outside the bar, keeping a close eye on his next target. Soon after, the suspected people entered the VIP room, but they went to another table before discussing anything sensitive, making it difficult for Anthony to hear them. Nick sneaked into the restaurant via the emergency escape. Meanwhile, the organization Anthony was targeting, led by a powerful figure named Hussein bin Ferry, discussed their intentions to destabilize the American economy. They had a scientist named Fevsi who had developed a system to control the city's electricity with a smartphone. With a single button, they could turn off the city's power. Nick unexpectedly emerged and assaulted them while they were still discussing the strategy, killing three of Hussein's bodyguards. Hussein, Fevsi, and the other men escaped by running to the lift. Anthony witnessed the attack but arrived too late to interrogate the witnesses. Meanwhile, Hussein directed Fevsi to develop the apparatus he displayed the night before. Fevsi, on the other hand, sought $50 million to complete the project. Hussein agreed without hesitation, eager to carry out his plan. At night, Hussein's niece, Rashida, hosted a party in a flat where Anthony was also present, discreetly spying on Hussein. Soon later, Anthony approached Rashida to inquire about her uncle's whereabouts, but she admitted she had no idea. Unbeknownst to Anthony, Hussein was watching him on a security camera beside Zico, who recognized him as a DA agent. Hussein was suspicious and ordered Zico to kill Anthony. At the same moment, Anthony had a chance to see Nick among the party visitors. Nick sneaked away from the party as he attempted to match his face to a photo on his phone. Anthony quickly found Mina and requested her to accompany him in her car to track down Nick. Despite losing sight of Nick during the chase, Anthony remembered the type of car and its plate number. The next day, armed with this information, Anthony looked near the dock where he had lost Nick the night before. After some time, he noticed Nick departing in his car and motioned for him to stop. Anthony then faced Nick, who turned out to be his biological father and had abandoned him when he was in middle school. Nick then led Anthony to his floating house and explained why he had to leave him when he was younger. Nick disclosed his status as a government-hired assassin. After his enemies murdered his wife, Nick decided to leave Anthony for his own safety. After hearing this, Anthony, who was originally furious, began to understand why his father had to leave him. Nick then disclosed that they were both on the same mission, to track down Hussein's organization. He asked Anthony to join forces to finish the objective. Before Anthony could go, Nick handed him a cell phone and asked him to keep in touch. However, as Anthony was ready to get into his car, Zico and Hussein's men kidnapped him abruptly. Unfortunately, Hussein's men attacked Nick and prevented him from protecting his son. Hussein confronted Anthony quickly after his men captured him, wanting to know who had killed his men. Anthony refused to reveal anything and told him to ask Zico. Hussein ordered his troops to torment Anthony before executing him. Meanwhile, Nick rushed to save Anthony after tracing his son's whereabouts using the GPS cell phone he had given him earlier. When Nick arrived, he turned off the electricity and fought off some of Hussein's men. Soon after, some of Hussein's surviving men fled the scene to save themselves, while Nick successfully rescued Anthony and transported him to his boat for medical treatment. When Escalante and his squad arrived at the shooting area, they discovered several of Hussein's men had died as a result of Nick's attack. They also discovered an electrical control gadget, which Hussein intended to employ to disrupt the American economy. The next night, Mina called Anthony to tell him that Zico was holding her captive. Despite Nick's warnings not to act rushly, Anthony went to rescue Mina without hesitation. Shortly later, Anthony arrived at the location of Mina's captivity, causing Zico to encourage Anthony to immediately contact Nick. Zico had no idea Nick was already there, shooting him in the shoulder from across the room. At that point, Anthony and Nick banded together to fight Zico and Hussein's men. Nick requested to know Hussein's location from Zico, 
who demanded $1 million in exchange for the information. Meanwhile, at Hussein's house, Fevzi sought a portion of the cash, stating that his family needed money. Hussein, however, refused, enraged that Fevzi's device was incomplete and was now in the hands of the authorities. Hussein killed Fevzi after becoming frustrated with his persistence. Rashida watched the assault and was astonished to see her uncle's cruelty. Zico soon appeared at Hussein's house, putting a gun on Nick and lugging a corpse bag containing Anthony. When one of Hussein's men opened the package, Anthony, who was still alive, pointed his gun at Hussein, who felt betrayed by Zico. Zico admitted that he felt driven to betray Hussein owing to his low salary and a need for more finances. Meanwhile, Nick pushed Rashida to leave immediately, understanding that she was not involved in Hussein's plans. A shootout broke out between Anthony's crew and Hussein's, but Anthony and Nick worked together to eliminate the group, including Hussein. Afterwards, Zico, who remained unscathed, requested payment from Nick, who had no intention of paying him because he had simply used Zico to reach Hussein. Minutes later, police arrived at Hussein's house after receiving information on the shooting. They discovered everyone dead, apart from Zico, who was tied up and his lips taped shut. Several years after the mission, Anthony is with Nick, Mina, and Juan's family. While they are eating together, Nick proposes they go to a more comfortable location. Suddenly, Anthony receives a call from Frank offering him a new mission. Thanks for watching. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.